Hi, everyone. Welcome to Faith in an Ever-Changing World, Encouragement and Hope. I'm Janet Harley, and with me today for Faith Story is Jack Foster. Jack is the illustrator of over 100 children's books. He is very talented. He also authors and illustrates a blog about the Bible that is used in children's ministries around the world. Jack, what a pleasure to have you with me today. Uh, thank you so much, Janet. Thank you so much for having me. And it's, it is, it's a pleasure for me to be here. Great. That's awesome. All right. If you will, please share your faith story with us. Okay, uh, well, my, uh, my two main topics would be like um, God's mercy and uh, the amazing uh, power and transformation of his word. So right. I'm going to go into my, uh, a little bit of my testimony because uh, it's all through my testimony. So sure. yes. um, I got married uh, uh, pretty young. So by the time I was like age 27, I had a house in the suburbs, uh, five kids, a good oh job. I had finished art school and uh, I had always dreamed of being a, uh, a cartoonist and uh, uh, have my own comic, comic strip in the newspaper. Uh, well, because I love to draw, but also because uh, those guys made a lot of money. You know, so. mm. <laughs> um, <laughs> everything was going good uh, until it began to unravel. My, uh, my wife's brother uh, was uh, murdered and her uh, little sister got killed by a drunk driver. Oh my. Uh, then uh, my son was diagnosed with a rare blood disorder uh, and my hours were being cut at work. And on top of all that, I had a file cabinet full of rejection letters from my cartoon strip that I had been uh, you know, sending in. Yeah. So between my wife being uh, an uh, emotional wreck and uh, my son being sick, the hospital bills you know, piling up and uh, uh, me feeling like a failure as an artist, I was like mm -hmm. really stressed out. You know? and then I remembered something that my uh, dad said once when I was uh, a kid, he pulled me aside and said, Jack, he said, you know, I drink too much, uh, but uh, he said, I have all these kids and all these bills and it's the only thing that seems to help. Well, my, yeah, my dad was an alcoholic and his dad was an alcoholic and I'm not sure how far it goes down the line, but uh, I always said I was never going to be an alcoholic, but I thought a couple of drinks to help, uh, you know, kind of distress a little bit would be all right. But uh, a couple of drinks led to a couple more, a couple more. Pretty soon it was like every day and my drinking was getting really totally out of hand and it was mm. taking a huge toll on my marriage. Wow. And, uh, along with drinking as well as other addictions comes uh, lying and blaming. And uh, I lied and blamed my wife right into the arms of another man. You know? so when I found out about that, I was, uh, I was really devastated. I remember one night I, uh, uh, in the middle of the night, I got up and I drove my car to a dark intersection and uh, I knew that semi trucks barreled through there like 60 miles an hour. So I parked my car in the middle of the intersection, turned off all my lights and just waited, you know. But uh, oh. see, it felt like I was waiting for a long time. <laughs> I think it was only a matter of a couple seconds. I started thinking about my kids mm -hmm. and it, like, I, I, I couldn't do it, you know. So I started the car and, you know, I went back home and I tried to quit drinking after that, but uh, it really had a, had a hold on me, you know. Yeah. I would quit drinking for a while then I would start up again and I would be even worse after I started up than I was before. And I started to really, I was getting like into drugs and some other stuff and my sins were really piling up. And uh, I, I knew at that point that uh, I had kind of reached the point of no return. Uh, my, the scales were tipped so far towards the bad stuff that I knew that I could never do enough good stuff in order to balance it off. And, give God even a chance to forgive me. You know, my theology was really, <laughs> really messed up at that point. But uh, I knew I was going to hell. That's, uh, that was the thing that was in my head, you know. So I figured, well, my purpose in life was just to have as much fun as I could, but kind of teach my kids at the same time not to follow in my, in my footsteps. You know? But uh, <laughs> that didn't work very well. 
my uh, my marriage ended. I lost I lost my job. Uh, uh, there was like so Your much. The whole world I, was just falling apart. Exactly. I was going oh, down, down the hill, like quick. I got three DUIs and I was looking at going to jail. It was, oh, it, was, my. it was bad. So after I got divorced, I lived in my car for a while and then I finally got a little uh, room above a bar. Figured I could, you know, drink and then just crawl up the stairs and pass out on my bed. And so one morning I, uh, I was sitting on the edge of my bed and I just started thinking about my life and I just started crying like a baby. You know? Uh, I was like 42 years old. I, in 15 years, I managed to lose everything that I ever cared about. You know? And wow. I was like in real, really in deep despair and completely hopeless. Mm -hmm. But God, I love that, that, uh, that, that little two words, but God. Right. I have it, have it written on one, uh, one of my Bibles on the cover. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the Bible's all full of but God moments like... Um, yeah. Uh, Joseph was sold by his brothers in slavery, but God. Uh, Moses and the Israelites were, you know, cornered by the Red Sea, but but God. That's right. uh, even in the New Testament, Saul was persecuting and overseeing the, the murder of Christians, but God. Uh, one of my favorite um, proverbs is 16:9, uh, and it says, uh, uh, "Man charts his course, but God directs his steps." So. So my but God moment is uh, my brother Bob was a uh, a Bible teacher, and he would go around to different people's houses and you know have Bible studies. Well, this one particular night, he was at my my mom's house having a Bible study, and oh. there was about um, eight, seven or eight people, you know, sitting around the table taking turns reading scriptures. Mm -hmm. uh, they were studying the Book of Joshua. I was passing through, going out somewhere, probably to get in trouble or something. <laughs> I don't know. I know it probably wasn't good. And uh, as I was passing through, they were they were taking turns reading scriptures, and I was I made it all the way to the back door, and I think I had my my hand on the on the doorknob, and I heard, "This is the truth," and I was like, "What? The Bible is the truth?" You know, Janet, I. I always thought the Bible was a bunch of stories made up, so you know, kind of trick people into to being good. Yeah. But uh, I heard it again. This is the truth. So I was like, "Wow!" So I walked back into the kitchen. I was really embarrassed because of the way I had been living. But I asked. I said, "Would you guys mind if I joined you?" And my brother, he was all, all excited. He jumped up and took his arm and wiped off a spot at the table and said, "Sure, you know, we'd we'd love to have you." You know, so uh, that was like 20 years ago, and I, I'm still. A, attending the same Bible study now, believe it or not. Right. And uh, yeah, a lot of them are watching right now. So uh, hi guys. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so after that, I tagged along uh, with my, uh, my uh, brother to his church and uh, the, the pastor was you know, preaching out of the Bible, which I had never heard that before. And he was, you know, that's where I heard about God's incredible love and his forgiveness and his, mm. his amazing mercy and grace. And I really, I got, I got so choked up and I felt like a, a huge, you know, weight had been lifted from my shoulders. Yeah. And in February of uh, 2000, I surrendered my life to Christ. Mm. And uh, I started uh, attending a small Bible-believing church. And uh, at that time, I hadn't, hadn't picked up a, a pencil or a paintbrush or even thought about art for years because I figured that, that oh. ship sailed a long time ago. So, but I started feeling a little, a little desire in my heart to, to start doing it again. So at that little church that I was attending, I started uh, doing some artwork for the children's ministry and painting murals on the walls. And uh, I was still a, a really a, a very new Christian and I was learning a lot about God. And at that point I learned that, you know, God gives us uh, our talents not to make a lot of money like I, you know, and live a comfortable life like, you know, the American dream, you know, is, you know, use your talents, make a lot of money and be happy for the rest of your life. But uh, that's what I was shooting for at the beginning. But now I knew that God gave us, uh, gives us talents in order to share them with others and to bring him glory, you know. So yes. that's what I'm hoping that I, I do now is to, to give God the glory with my artwork. So after that, I uh, was talking to my daughter, Jenny, one day. She 
was fresh out of college and she's a graphic artist. And she said, uh, you know, are you still sending you know, cartoons through the mail? And I said, no, but uh, I was, I was kind of thinking about doing something like that again. And she said, well, you know, that's so old fashioned. She said, everything is done on the computer now. And <laughs> communication with the art directors, even the art is done digitally. So yeah. I said, uh, you know, uh, maybe you should take like a computer art class or something. So I was really nervous because I, I didn't have a computer and was never on a computer. I didn't know how to operate a computer at all. You know, so, <laughs> but I, I signed up, uh, you know, 50 years old and I went back to college. Well, almost 50. Mm -hmm. you know, I, was, I think I was like 48. Yeah, wonderful. So, uh, oh, wait till you hear this. Oh. <laughs> My first day I was sitting in class and uh, uh, with, you know, a bunch of 20 something year olds. <laughs> uh, I was sitting in front of my computer and I, uh, Ask the professor, can uh, somebody please show me how to turn this thing on? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I heard a few chuckles from some of the really students. Oh, okay. I'm, not, I'm not sure, but I, think I even saw the professor roll his eyes. Like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> but I did pretty good in the class, actually, by the time I, you know, when I, you know, learned everything. But uh, when I got out of this, you know, when I finished school, I, I knew I was nowhere near the caliber I needed to be as an artist to, to get stuff published. So I, I practiced for like a year. Oh, and during that year, you know, God really changed my heart because yeah. I still had the, the comic strip cartoon idea in my head. But through that year, I started drawing or illustrating scenes from the Bible instead of doing cartoons. So finally, when I got good enough, well, I thought I was good enough, you know, I posted some stuff online some guy from uh, Las Vegas said, uh, I know a children's book publisher, a Christian children's book publisher that's looking for your style. Oh, like, wow, really? I never even, never even thought about going really into children's books, you know? But um, I sent them some stuff and I was still kind of happy expecting the usual rejection letter that I always got. You know? But to my surprise, they signed me up to a two book deal like right away. It was, it was amazing. She? And then at I'll the same time, time I know, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Plus he, his redirection too, you know. Exactly. Yeah. So I also got a, a, a an email from another illustrator that said, um, uh, you should uh, start a blog and put your, you know, your biblical illustrations on there. So I thought, well, that was a pretty good idea, but I didn't want it to be like a blog with just pictures where kids would go, oh yeah, that's right. that story of David and Goliath or something. Because yeah. you know? I, I really want kids to know that the Bible yeah. is the truth. Exactly. So I figured I wanted it to be kind of like a teaching uh, blog. So that in 2009, uh, Mr. Biblehead was born. That's my blog. So I started at the beginning and I started to uh, teach kids. Well, I was like paraphrasing the, the Bible so that kids would understand it better. Yeah. And I would add a little bit of a um, little bit of a life application, you know, through the kids eyes and some uh, illustrations, all the while reiterating the fact that, you know, this is true. You know, these stories really happen. That you know, the Bible is true. So uh, that was like eleven years ago, and I was kind of hoping that uh, maybe two or three hundred people would would see it, and uh, maybe a handful of moms would read the stories to their kids. You know, so that's cool. uh, <laughs> God is <Yeah>. so amazing. <laughs> well, I know you've got a lot of followers now, and uh, yeah, I know, and it's all because of God. It's like uh, that's it. He, he, you know, he touches people's hearts to open it up and look at it and read it. And so far I have like uh, almost a half a million people that have viewed, viewed the blog. Wow. So that is like, just blows my mind how God is using me. Oh. And uh, a few years ago, a, a wonderful Bible, uh, a wonderful ministry from the uh, UK picked me up at uh, the Mr. Biblehead blog. Uh-huh. They do like uh, PowerPoints and they put it in different languages and they send it to churches around the world oh. and in their language and uh, oh. so that they could teach their people about God. Well, they started putting Mr. Biblehead into a PowerPoint, sending it around the world and they send me stats every year. And in January, I think uh, Mr. Biblehead uh, PowerPoint was downloaded 100,000 times in 181 different countries. Wow. I was like, wow, I didn't even know there was 181 different countries. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, God, look how, really that. Um, I know. Look how God has just turned.
turned your life around. And, you know, once you accepted him, uh, mm-hmm. accepted Jesus as your savior and, and, and how your life has just completely turned around uh, and how he's used your talents. And all because I heard that this was the truth, you know, I hadn't yep. I'd never believed it, but, you know. Yeah. So, oh, one more uh, God thing before I wrap it up is um, okay. uh, 15 years ago, I got remarried to a, a wonderful woman who kind of had the same mission heart that I did. We, we thought about going on mission trips to around the world and sharing the love of mm-hmm. Jesus with, with children. But she got diagnosed with uh, a chronic uh, disease uh, that oh. you know, kind of stops her from traveling. Oh. But Mr. Biblehead has reached so many more children around the world that I could ever even have reached in person, you know, so it's like that uh, Bible verse from Ephesians, I think it's 310, uh, God is able to do far more than we ever hope or even imagine, and he's yeah. doing far more than I ever, ever imagined, so, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and a little update on how I'm doing now, I'm still illustrating children's books, um, uh, still married to that wonderful woman, uh, mm-hmm. my five kids have grown up to be amazing adults and oh, fantastic parents. I have 14 grandchildren and God has kept me sober for over 20 years. Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. 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 What a testimony and faith story. Uh, Jack, thank you so much for sharing that. And I, I know it's going to be an encouragement uh, to someone watching that uh, feels like maybe their life is a failure. Yeah, and, you can uh, reach one person if one person can identify. That's right. That's, that's right. That's exactly right. So that that will be our prayer. Uh, and Jack, thank you so much. And I know God is going to continue to bless you and uh, to bless your, your business uh, and being an uh, illustrator for children's books uh, in the future. Uh, thank you so much, Jen. Yes, and thank you for being with us. And hopefully you'll come back and visit again one day. Oh, I'd love to if you'll, if you'll have good. me. <laughs> good, good. That's great. Thank you for watching and have faith and look up, friends, where our help comes from. Bye. God bless.